Good day everyone. Now I'm sorry I felt sick last week so I had to reschedule this story to this week but uh, here I am and uh, this story that I got for you today is quite unusual. It, it's got a few triggers so before I start telling it I should inform you that this story is about somebody who committed suicide and that's the first trigger warning. The second trigger warning is that it has mention of drugs and a little bit of you know shooting people in the knee and stuff like that so if you are in any way feeling suicidal or if you think that talking about me talking about suicide is going to make you upset then i would suggest that you do not watch beyond this point now the story in question is called undertaker please drive slow it is by ron goulart now this story is one that I stumbled upon on my library in a book called The Best of Mystery, which was edited by Alfred Hitchcock and I presume collected also by Alfred Hitchcock. Now, Alfred Hitchcock is one of the greatest filmmakers I've had the privilege of, you know, seeing on the screen. But he also is known for the three investigators children, uh, children's books. But uh, this is a short story and uh, it is called Undertaker, Please Drive Slow. As before, I will plunge straight into it and if you have anything to say to me regarding the quality of narration and uh, whether you would like a particular story told, then please let me know in the comments below. Undertaker, Please Drive Slow. Here we go. It opens with a policeman talking to an old man called Mr. Oland and Mr. Oland keeps showing him a clipping which shows that his daughter Nancy uh, jumped off a boat and drowned but for some reason Mr. Oland is unable to accept the fact that his daughter has committed suicide he keeps telling this detective that look son you're gonna have to investigate the case and you're gonna have to find out what happened to Nancy so at first this detective is very uh, I would say patronizing when he says that it's quite clear that it's a case of suicide Mr. Oland how do you expect me to help you and he says no please take the case please take the case I need to know so he says okay give me details about the case so apparently Nancy had disappeared two years before and there was a press clipping showing that she had fallen off a boat or jumped off a boat and everyone thought that she had committed suicide now nancy was about 5'10 and she was she had uh, she was a redhead and she had a red sports car so the next thing this detective asks is why are you suddenly you know trying to dig up this information what made you sit silent for two years why do you suddenly need a detective so mr oland says look i have got a letter from nancy the letter told me to go to palm springs and check into a particular motel where she would uh, where she would wait for me or meet me so i locked the house down and i ran because I thought that perhaps she had run away from home, faked her suicide. So this suddenly gets the detective's interest, you see, because he's now thinking that, okay, perhaps there is something solid about this case. Maybe, maybe it's beneficial to me if I take the case. So he agrees and he starts investigating. The first place he goes is the pizzeria opposite the uh, house and he asks, that on any day of the previous week did you see someone in a red sports car come up to this house so and he also has a photograph of nancy was it this girl was it this particular girl and uh the owner of the pizzeria his name is chet i believe chet says no it's it, uh, nobody came to the house as such there was a red sports car but uh it drove past the house and that was about it so no leads over there next he decides to go to the motel and he talks to the owner of the motel 
And the owner says, yes, I do remember that this gentleman checked in and was there for three days. And then he gave up and very defeated, we had a very defeated look in his eyes. And he went back to where he came from. Now, Nancy apparently had friends, flatmates rather. She lived with both of these women at uh, different times in her life. And as far as Mr. Oland is aware, she did not have a boyfriend. So, the friends are about to be introduced. One of them is called Beth Eisner and one of them is called Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan works in a bar and is still studying. Beth Eisner was, as I have mentioned, Nancy's flatmate. So our detective decides that he's going to go after this particular lead next. He drives up to Carrie Mulligan's bar, speaks to the barkeep and has a word with Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan says Mr. Roland should just accept the fact that Nancy has passed away. It's like beating a dead horse with a lightsaber. So once again he's thwarted and the one thing he does notice though is that there's a red sports car parked outside the uh, bar. So he doesn't say anything, he just makes a note of this point and he moves on. He then goes to Beth Eisner and there something very surprising is revealed. Mr. Oland was wrong. Nancy did have a boyfriend, she had multiple boyfriends, she was casually dating. One of these boyfriends was called Tamerlane. Now Tamerlane was in prison, he had been arrested for possession of drugs. And he had recently, in a matter of like two weeks ago, he had been released from prison. So now I'd like to do a little bit of detective work. Here comes a known drug dealer who's stepped out of prison and just at that moment this letter from Nancy arrives. So I had my suspicions going that this Tamerlane is definitely involved. <clears throat> so... And as it so turns out, I was right, because uh, when our detective decides to pursue this lead, he goes to where Jake Tamerlane works. Jake Tamerlane works in a farmhouse, which is also a part farmhouse, part guest house. He's one of the clerks over there. So this person is uh, chasing after Tamerlane trying to chase down the lead and he arrives at the farmhouse and he he has these multiple visiting cards with him so he claims to be an insurance guy and says that it's possible that um, Mr. Tamerlane will get some money I need to speak with him to confirm his identity and now here comes the twist when he approaches the bunk where Tamerlane stays he notices the same red sports car that was parked outside the bar and rather than barge in on them he decides to unholster his gun and peek in through the window he finds Carrie Mulligan talking to Jake Tamerlane and Jake Tamerlane is saying look I broke into the house and I found it exactly where it was where I had asked Nancy to keep it it was worth 50 grand when I gave it to her. That's dollars by the way, not rupees. It was worth 50 grand when I gave it to her. It must be worth at least 65 now. At this point, our detective knocks on the door and it is on a chain. So Jake Tamerlane opens the door and he says, I've come to see Miss Mulligan. She knows me. And uh, Miss Mulligan is like, oh no, that's the detective I told you about who came and spoke to me. Run. So Jake Tamerlane immediately starts sprinting towards the rear exit and by this time our detective has obviously pulled out his gun and cuts him off at the pass. So they run after each other for a little while until they come to a barbed wire fence where Jake Tamerlane's chase ends. And he's like, if you're man enough, drop the gun and face me one to one. Let's have a fist fight. Whoever wins gets to survive this. But of course, that is not how life is, is it? So Jake Tamerlane decides to charge at this detective of ours and this detective coolly shoots him in the knee 
and the time lane collapses i'm sorry <laughs> Sorry, 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 let me just laugh this out. Anyway, so Jake Tamerlane collapses, which is the biggest anticlimax of them all, in my opinion. And uh, I mean, who would be stupid enough to charge at somebody who's got a gun? That too, there's more than three, four feet distance between them. So at that range, if you're, if you're a cop who's been trained in marksmanship, you don't miss, right? I mean, you would have to be one of the most pathetic shots in the world to miss at a distance of three feet. So Jake Tamerlane goes back to prison and uh, Carrie Mulligan is booked under being an accessory to drugs. And unfortunately, the detective comes back to Mr. Olin and says, I'm sorry, this is what I discovered and this is the guy and everything. And I have a full confession from him that yes, he did coerce Nancy into hiding, hiding the drugs. So this mysterious it that was being mentioned, it was actually approximately a kilo and a half of heroin so possession once again and this time he's not getting out easy but this is where it breaks my heart you know guys because uh, this father mr Oland, he says no she can't be dead she can't be dead please keep looking please and that is where the story ends so, uh, this story is called Undertaker, Please Try Slow. I did a little research on that particular line and the full line is Undertaker, please drive slow because the person you're taking with you, I really hate to see her go. That was Undertaker, Please Drive Slow by Ron Goulart from a collection of stories called The Best of Mystery edited and compiled by Alfred Hitchcock which is in my library and I was a kid when I read it but the story stayed with me you know it just wedged itself into my little brain and I figured that it was unusual enough and unique enough to have a session about so here it is as for the some of you who may have noticed that there's something written on my t-shirt my t-shirt says legends are born in October and uh, this I got online and uh, my birth date coincides with Oscar Wilde's 16th October. So that is why my dad gifted me this t-shirt on one of my birthdays. And that is it. That's all I got for you. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the story. And I will see you next week with a different one. If you have any requests for stories that you want to be told, stories from a different language that I can use Google Translate to, you know, uh, get out of. Please link them in the comments below. Let me take a look at them and stay safe, stay vigilant. COVID isn't over yet, but there's hope, right? Let's hope. This is the Bilge Master signing off. I will see you next week with another story. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Good day.